You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. It's viewers' letters time, and our first one is from Boris in London. And Boris writes, Love the channel. Could you do a nice Scottish recipe for me so I can be more Scottish and use my newfound Scottishness to patronise the Scottish while floundering around trying to prevent Scottish independence? And Boris continues, I posted the letter myself because I'm a big boy now, but mummy helped me with the stamp and envelope. Well, Boris, I've got a real treat for you here because we're making Scottish lawn sausage. And I've started with 500 grams of pork mince. And I'll add a teaspoon of salt to that. And a generous half a teaspoon of pepper. And you definitely want a teaspoon of ground coriander in here. And a teaspoon of nutmeg. And I'm going to add 100 grams of breadcrumbs to this now. But you could also use oat flour or blitzed oats. And I need to add a couple of tablespoons of water to that mix along with a nice bit of fresh chopped parsley. But you can use any herbs here that float your boat, if you like. And all there is left to do now is to add a heaped tablespoon of tomato puree, and then we can mix this together with the hands we used to clap the NHS, instead of giving nurses a decent pay rise. And while we do that, I've got another letter here, and this one's from the Pope in the Vatican, and the Pope writes, All right, fella, I love a bit of sausage, but the phallic shape always triggers me. Have you got an idea how I can enjoy my sausage in a different shape so I don't get all frisky around the quiet boys? Cheers, mate. P.S. I absolutely love watching your channel. It's like crack to me. Well, the Pope, I've got you covered because I'm using this empty milk carton here and this is going to help me form the signature shape of this lawn sausage. I've cut the top off and I've cleaned it out and I'm going to prepare it now by oiling it inside generously to prevent the mix sticking when I put my sausage meat in. And we want to form the sausage meat into a large sausage shape here, just so it knows what being a real sausage is all about for a bit. And this will make it easier to put in our milk carton. And once it's in there, put some cling film on top. And then we'll be ready to form this inside the milk carton by pushing it down and try and fill all the little gaps inside. Because we want this shape to be sharp as a dart when we take it out. And if you want to be a real swat, you can use a jar or a glass to really press this down here. And once we've given it a good stroke and a couple more body blows, we need to fire it in the freezer for a few hours. And when it comes out, it'll be nice and firm. And that'll help us keep our square shape as we decant the sausage from the modified milk carton. And because of the oil inside, the frozen sausage meat should just squeeze out nicely. And there is something oddly satisfying about the way this slides out of here, I feel. And now we can cut it into the signature square slices using a non-serrated sharp knife here. And as you'll see, when the first piece is chopped, it holds a lovely square shape. And you can cut this as thick as you like. I cut it quite thin usually, and I usually get about 12 slices out of this mix. And don't be scared to just go around and tidy up any pieces and press them into a square shape if they've become a bit deformed during the cutting and arsing about process. And you definitely want to store these properly, and you can do that by folding up a piece of baking paper and then cutting it into little squares because we're going to need a piece of paper between each of our sausage pieces, aren't we? Otherwise, it'll have too much of a laugh and a carry on with itself and it'll turn back into a big, massive, single mass, won't it? And unless you're going to eat this all in one go after you've made it, you'll be able to access a few pieces every now and again when you need them without having a nightmare because you can just slip them into a bag and then put them in the freezer. And you can cook these from frozen. Give them about three minutes on a medium heat with some oil. Don't be tempted to push down on them with your spatula though at first because you might spoil that square shape that we've worked so hard to maintain. And another three minutes on the other side, we'll see this Scottish lawn sausage ready for your table and your gobs. And our final letter today is from Nicola in Glasgow. And Nicola writes, I love a bit of lawn sausage. I do me like I do me. The problem is, aside from a full Scottish breakfast, I never know how to use it. Could you perhaps give all your millions of viewers a serving suggestion for this Scottish classic? And Nicola continues, Please stop calling me, attempting to contact me and sending gifts to the post. I'm a happily married woman of many years standing, and your unwanted attention is unsettling. If it continues, I will have no option but to contact the authorities. Well, Nicola, legal threats notwithstanding, I've got you covered here with a lightly toasted square English muffin, link in the description for them. Place a cheese slice on there and a piece of our lovely Scottish lawn sausage, of course, with a fried egg, and you've got the most epic sausage and egg McMuffin imaginable. Thanks for watching, and for all your letters, folks, and I'll see you again soon with more of your favourite recipes. Cheers, everyone. Terra.